You're listening to Northwoods Church Matters, a podcast of Northwoods Church in Evansville, Indiana, where we discuss why the local church matters and things that matter to the local church. Welcome back to the Northwoods Church Matters podcast. I'm Rachel Bland here today with Pastor Bobby, and I'll let Pastor Bobby introduce our fun guest Oh, today. yeah. Okay. We're excited to introduce our desire to be future student pastor and his wife. And so that's a sort of a big day in the life of Northwood. It is. It's kind of fun. So we're welcoming Zach and Courtney Newsom to the podcast. Welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. We're, we feel famous now. It's our first time on a podcast. So, yeah, Our church has been looking for a student pastor for a few months. Went through, I don't know, these are, these are facts that the Newsoms are hearing for the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've probably gone through, I don't know, north of 30, 40 resumes, interviews with half a dozen or more people, ultimately settled on. Zach and Courtney is really believing this is the best candidate and right candidate for Northwoods. The process for us looked like that the elders have allowed Darren and I to be the search team for Northwoods. And so we were the search team. We did the initial interviews. And then after the search team work, when we felt like it should go to a second interview, the second interview went to the full staff. So Rachel, Matt and Ryan joined in on that. That was very helpful. Yeah, it was a good conversation. It was a good conversation because, I mean, ultimately, anytime someone joins staff, we're all working together. For those of you who don't know, we serve closely with each other. We very much value team around here. And so it was very important to us that that interview happen. That interview, we, we really brought everybody together back I think Darren was at home that day and everybody else was in different offices. We brought everybody back together and they pretty quickly affirmed that we should take the next step. And the elders have met with Zach and Courtney. We fully are recommending uh, Zach as our next student pastor. Matt has agreed to help us do some family ministry training about once a quarter. And we're excited about that as well. Yeah. So fun stuff happening. Yeah. So that's really good news. So let's get to know Zach and Courtney a little bit. So why don't you guys start off by telling us where you guys are from? So I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. And I'm from the big metropolis of Huntingdon, Tennessee, population of about 5,000 people. I usually say it's no man's land uh, in West Tennessee between Memphis and Nashville, close to Jackson, Tennessee. So how did you guys meet if you guys are from different states? We met in Kentucky at Murray State University at the church that we were both attending. Uh, Hardin Baptist Church is where we met. And we actually got to know each other well through, we had lifespan psychology together, and Zach decided that I was apparently cute enough for him to sit next to that day. Aww. (laughs) It was. We had a lot of study sessions together. and uh, It was like one of the only Bs I made in college. (laughs) We didn't do well in the class. I made a C. So. So he, pu- he pulled you down. He pulled me down. Yeah, yeah. He pulled that's, you down. That's what we're yeah. saying. So he was a distraction in class. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> he, may, he may have pulled you down for the rest of your life. You're not yeah. quite sure yet. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> At the time, we were, I guess, juniors in college. I had just transferred to Murray State. And so we were juniors at the time. And I had been, we had not been dating very long. I was in conversations with International Mission Board uh, about them sending me out uh, pretty quickly after graduation. The only hang-up was, are you dating anybody? And so the, they basically said, get married and wait a year or break it off and go now. So by God's grace, she decided to come with me. Well, you had just graduated. I had another semester. It took me about four and a half years to and so we lived there for a year, went to seminary for a year, and then spent two years on the mission field. That's good. So we got, we've got two boys. We've got a four-year-old named Nate and a two-year-old named Zane. So That's we, awesome. We had a lot cool. of fun. Yeah. That's, That's cool. awesome. When did you all get married? 2013. 2015. <laughs> Cut that part out. <laughs> no, leave that in. 
We edit. We edit. Ju- we edit sorry. the podcast as we go. He just made your all's marriage longer. That's true. That's June true. 13, 2015. So that's why I said. We're talking about this one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, June 13, 2015. <laughs> that is hilarious. That was a winning moment right now. I love it. All right, so tell us about your relationship with Jesus. How did you guys come to know him? Uh, Courtney, I'll start with you. I grew up in the Methodist church, and customary to Methodist church, we had confirmation class in Mm -hmm. the fifth grade, and it was in that class that somebody shared the bridge diagram with me, and that's how I came to know Jesus. Grew up in the youth group, but was never really discipled until I went to college, and by God's sovereignty, as soon as I stepped foot on Murray State's campus. I met a girl who was fired up about Jesus and fired up about living a life for Jesus. And so we became good friends and got plugged into the church there. So I'd say I came to faith in fifth grade, but I really started to grow once I got to college. Praise the Lord. Zach, what about you? I grew up in a Christian home. I got saved at the age of 11. My parents took me to church pretty much every time the doors were open. I was born again in a really small country Baptist church. My grandfather started that church and pastored that church for 30-something years, and so he's really the one that led me to faith in Christ. So soon after that, I was 11, I think by the age of 13 or 14, when I began to get my teenage years, I had a friend that kept inviting me to be at youth group there at First Baptist Church Huntington, Uh, and so in junior high, our family joined that church And so that's what I would consider to be my home church. Very thriving youth ministry. It was in those years that I had felt that the Lord was calling me to ministry, really on my first mission trip, particularly the mission field. But I really didn't grow until my college years. And I would credit that to a couple of things. One, I had a guy that just took me under his wing and poured into me and discipled me, told me how to share my faith, told me how to read the Bible for myself and those types of things. And, and I would credit it also to my college years, really the first time I started reading my Bible for the first time, instead of dusting it off and taking it with me to church on Sunday morning, I was in the Word every day. And so I credit it to those two things and, and obviously the grace of God. Now, you mentioned about that call to ministry that you had on a mission trip. Talk a little bit more about what that journey has been like for you. Yeah, the first mission trip I went on was It's called Mission Arlington, and so a lot of people that are connected with Southwestern Seminary there in Dallas-Fort Worth would be familiar with that ministry. And so, But it's basically uh, backyard Bible clubs there in inner city, and so we went to several kind of low-income neighborhoods doing backyard Bible club in those neighborhoods and met a kid named Marcus that week, led him to faith in the Lord, and have been hooked ever since. And so I just really felt the Lord impressing on me This is what I want you to give your life to, uh, particularly cross-cultural missions. And so fought that for a long time, and it was really in my college years that I fully embraced, like, no, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I was actually going to school to be a physical therapy assistant, which is what Courtney does now. Irony. Mm -hmm. Irony. Very ironic. (laughs) But I realized pretty quickly I'd be miserable if that's what I'd decided to use my life. And so I knew that God was calling me to something different. Mm. That's awesome. Um, Okay. So this is the fun part. I love this part of y'all's story. So tell us about your mission experience, particularly what you guys did out on the mission field. So we served two years with the International Mission Board called the Journeyman Program, which is designed to be for post-college graduates two years on the mission field with uh, career missionaries. And so we had a a pretty awesome team that we worked with those two years we were there. We served in coastal Kenya. And so the interesting thing about Kenya, so Nairobi, Kenya is the capital. So Kenya is very Christianized. It's influenced a lot, especially in Nairobi and upcountry by the West. And so there's a lot of churches there. You're not going to find a ton of healthy churches but it's very Christianized on the coast where we served is very Muslim. And so they say that that Mombasa, which is the second largest city in the country, they say that's where Islam came from the Middle East to Sub-Saharan Africa. And so you'll see there mosques that are three times older than our country. And so we're seeking to reach an unreached Muslim people group in that area. 
And so by God's grace, we were able to see many come to faith in Christ. We're able to plant a church that is still actively reaching Muslims. We've been off of the mission field for about three and a half years now. And so the church is much healthier and thriving, much more than it was when we were there. That's good. Anything you want to add, Courtney? We also worked with a drug rehab facility there. So one of the problems on the coast of Kenya, especially in in an age group like 20 to 40, where a lot of the people are hooked on heroin. So with Zach's biblical counseling background, and then my exercise science background as well, we were able to go into the drug rehab facility, and he was able to design some of the biblical counseling aspects of the program that they really wanted to see done. And then I was able to kind of help with the the detox part of heroin. Exercise is more of a a natural way of getting that dopamine rush, and it helps with cleaning out. And so we, by God's grace, we had several Muslim guys come in, stay a week with us, hear the gospel week after week. We had a lot of guys that got clean and left and went back to Islam, but we saw several of them through that process, put their faith in Jesus, turn from Islam, uh, when we're able to plant a church with a lot of these former drug addicts. So after the journeyman, you guys moved back to the U.S. Explain what that transition was like coming back to the U.S. Well, we were thrilled to be a part of the church that did call us. And so we went to a town called Sylacauga, Alabama. That was one of my first questions. I asked them, how do you pronounce this place? <laughs> um, but uh, most people are familiar with Talladega, although they'll tell you there it's pronounced Talladega. And, and another piece of this is that we had, I think it was Carpenters for Christ from Alabama, who after Carpenters for Christ helped build this facility that we're sitting in right now, and they are based out of Talladega. I went down to Talladega to basically say thank you after this facility was built to a banquet that they had Hmm. there at Shaco Shaco Springs. Springs. Yeah. 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 And so we have some connections to Talladega as a church. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool to see it come full circle. Carpenters for Christ is much more active then than it is now out of our association there that we work with called the Coosa River Baptist Association. And so they're very well probably were deacons from my church that helped build this facility however many years ago that was and so it was pretty cool but so we were excited to be a part of this church this is a church that is passionate about missions Uh, hasn't always been the case but of recent they're very generous towards missions very connected with the international mission board and those types of things so we were excited to come on board there i tell people all the time it was probably the hardest transition i've ever had to make the International Mission Board, they prepare you for the culture shock. You kind of know, hey, I'm going to a different country, different language, different culture. You prepare yourself for that. But the reverse culture shock for us, especially for me, was a lot harder. Going from trying to plant churches among an unreached Muslim people group to back in the Bible Belt, doing youth ministry again, and then COVID hits. And so it was just a very tough transition. But God taught us a a lot through that process. So I I guess one of the questions that I have is coming here as a student pastor, and really this is the first time we've even mentioned student ministry. We've talked a lot about missions, but we really haven't talked much about student ministry. Was student ministry on your radar previous to missions? Especially for me, student ministry is where I started to see even myself start to grow. I can remember when we were in college at the at the church we were at, somebody saying, hey, why don't you serve as students? And I thought, oh, no, like they ask questions and I don't know the answer to them. It's scary. But I got to lead a small group. There were seventh grade girls at the time. It was just like, wow, they're not as scary as you think they are. And they thought I was cool. You know, one of those things that even when we went overseas, I think I still had a heart for students because that, that's such a pivotal time in somebody's life. Your brains are just so able to form good or bad. I've always been involved, it seems like, in student ministry as a student, obviously. My home church had a very thriving youth ministry. One of my mentors, my youth pastor, he served at First Baptist Huntington for 29 years as the youth pastor, which is very unheard of. And Preach, he was able to build 
something from the ground up and it's a very thriving ministry and i praise god that i was a part of it so i was involved been able to see that and and grow through that ministry then as a college student helped a lot especially during the summers they go on mission trips and things like that and so volunteer in that way uh the church that we met at hardin baptist church had a very one of the more thriving youth ministries that i've been a part of and have seen Uh, one of the ways that i believe that's the case is they had the luxury of having Murray State in their backyard, and so they were able to tap into these college students. And so really we had, it was mostly college students leading out in youth ministry and doing the small groups and things like that. And so we were a part of that. I interned there for one summer. We loved serving there. And then, of course, when we were in Wake Forest at Southeastern, we were only there about 10 months at that church, so we got plugged in and did some other things, but not youth ministry. So we were excited to come back and do youth ministry. That's always kind of been our heart. I love working with young people, and I just think, man, if you can get teenagers fired up about following Jesus, fired up about sharing their faith, and really considering, man, how can God use my life, leverage my life in such a way that, man, I can make the gospel known in the hardest places on planet Earth. That's really our heart is to see missionaries raised up through the local church, and we see teenagers, college students as pivotal in that. And so we're excited about the opportunity here, and we were loved serving in youth ministry where we're at now currently. It sounds like it was somewhat of an easy decision to understand that when you left the journeyman program and Kenya to come back to the States, that the likelihood of you leaving there to come back to the States, that you would be engaging youth ministry. Mm -hmm. It sounds like that was somewhat of a no-brainer. Yeah, Yeah, and our heart has always been, we know the global need, and so we want to be a part of a church that's all in on missions, and we, by God's grace, we are praying and working towards being a part of the sending end of that. If we're not there, we want to be committed to being a part of a church that's sending people to the mission field, and we see teenagers as huge in that. We agree. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, let's talk about Northwoods a little bit. What are you guys thinking so far about being here and this next possible assignment that God is bringing you to be the student pastor here at Northwoods? We're excited about it, obviously, for The things that I've already mentioned, we want to be a part of a church that's laser focused on making disciples and getting the gospel and planting churches in the hardest places on planet Earth. And we believe, man, Northwoods checks all the boxes on that end. We we have the same heartbeat as you guys do for missions. And so that for us is at the top of the list of things that we're most excited about. We're also thrilled that, man, There's a lot of churches that have their mission statement as making disciples. There's some form of that, but they're not really making disciples. And so I'm thrilled to see this is a church that's not only talking about making disciples, but they're actually doing it. And so those are some of the things. Obviously, you're preaching the Word. You're raising up godly men and women. And so we're excited about the opportunity. Evansville. We're excited to live in Evansville. It's a little bit closer to my parents, so it's a little bit of icing on the cake for us. What about what excites you about working with the students here at Northwoods? Yeah, I just love working with young people. And so I'm excited about being able to partner with parents and help them think through how can we disciple our kids. I'm excited just for the opportunity. This We're coming from a very rural area, and so it's pretty neat to see, man, it's a city. you got a lot of good-sized high schools and, and just different avenues to try to reach students. So I'm excited to partner with our parents and helping them think through how to disciple their children. I'm excited about being able to train these students to equip them to reach their classmates for Christ. Uh, and excited to see them active in serving in the local church in a variety of ways. And so. We're very excited about the opportunity. What is your hope for students and or their families in their personal walk with the Lord? For me, I think it's really important for students and their families to know how to read the Bible for themselves. I think growing up, not reading the Bible, when I went to college, that was mind-blowing to me that you could read the Bible and understand it and see Jesus is in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. So. For me, I'm just excited to be able to help ladies and students just understand the Bible. Yeah, uh, something that drives our philosophy as far as making disciples 
is known as the doctrine of the perpescuity of Scripture, which basically just means the Bible is written in such a way that anybody can understand it if they read it. We wholeheartedly believe in that. And so we, just to echo what Courtney says, we're all in on trying to equip our students to be able to feed themselves with God's Word rather than relying on somebody spoon-feeding them everything. And it's exciting to see that those kind of things are already taking place here. So that's not something we'll have to just start from scratch, but we've got a culture of that already in place here. So, Rachel, what are you reading right now in God's Word? Where are you at right now? I'm reading the book of James. You're in James? I am in James. So, Zach, where are you at right now in God's Word as far as where are you reading? I read Revelation chapter 7 this morning, so I'm slowly, almost done with reading through the New Testament in a year, so I'm a little bit behind uh, at the time that we're recording this podcast, but right now I'm reading Revelation. So, Courtney, <laughs> where, where are you at reading God's Word right now? I'm in the Psalms, so I'm trying to slowly go through the Psalms. That's good. Bobby Ray? Yes. Where are you at in Scripture right now? I'm in Ezekiel. Yeah. Yeah, it's which there's some strange things <laughs> that are found in Ezekiel, but I'm journaling through the scripture. I am in Ezekiel, I think Ezekiel chapter four right now. I asked for the New Testament Bible journaling set uh-huh. and my sister got those for me. Oh, that's awesome. So I have the whole New Testament one. Yeah. So that was yeah. fun. One of my goals for twenty twenty three is to finish the Old Testament. I think it's doable, but it will be a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. We love reading the Bible, and we love talking about the Bible. (laughs) It's kind of why we're here. (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, Zach, you mentioned that there were like three things that you would aspire for in your your dream world you would aspire for. Can you talk about what those three things were? Yeah, as far as youth ministry, I've kind of had a three-thirds approach. These are kind of the three things that I've tried to focus my time and energy on. I think I've already mentioned in in passing, but one, the top of the list is – We want to partner with parents. We don't want to be the ones discipling your kids for you. Rather, we want to come alongside our parents and help equip them to think through how can we disciple these kids that God has given us. To go along with your other question earlier, that's really a goal is to see, man, how can we send out 18-year-olds who are, man, fully equipped to make disciples, who can feed themselves with God's Word, who can competently share their faith, all these things. And so we see parents as the primary motivators of that, parents as being the ones in the driver's seat Mm -hmm. of discipleship. And so we in no way want to kick them out of the driver's seat and take over. We want to come alongside them and help equip our parents to disciple their kids. And so partnering with parents, secondly, we want to equip our students to reach students with the gospel. We believe that the best person to reach a teenager with the gospel as a teenager. And so we want to equip our students to do evangelism well, and we want to go do it together. And so some things that we've done at our church, we've drawn a half mile circle around our church, and we've taken teenagers knocking on every door within that half mile circle. And so those those are some of the things that we want to do, not only do evangelism training and talk about it, but actually go do it. We believe that evangelism, in a lot of ways, is better caught than taught. And so we want to partner with parents, equip our students to reach students for Christ, and we want to connect our students with the whole life of the church. We don't want them to operate in a silo, be only in the student building there by themselves, but we want them connected with the local church. The more adults we have connected with and investing in our teenagers, the better off we'll be. And so that's what we're trying to tap into. And we want to see our students serving in a variety of ways, whether that's leading out in worship on Sunday morning, whether that's greeters, you name it. We want them serving in a variety of ways, not just in youth ministry. I think one of the things that I hope those who are listening understand is one of the pieces that attracted us to Zach is those three things are exactly what we are desiring and have been desiring and trying to do here. So it's not a new philosophy for us. It's continuing down the same path we're on. And so you know, for us, this is not new. This is just simply us being able to continue down the same philosophy we have. We didn't tell Zach what to say. Right. He said it happens to be it's what we're trying to do. 
Okay, so fun questions that are just a random fire. Pepsi or Coke? Coke. Coke. Water. Water. (laughs) Do you drink drink soda? I don't drink soda hardly at all. I'll have a Sprite from time to time, but I'm pretty much uh, water, coffee. (laughs) Beach or mountains? Ooh, so hard. We want both, but South Africa, Cape Town, South Africa has both. Perfect. That's <laughs> the most beautiful place we've ever been. I think Cape Town, South Africa. If I had to pick, I'd probably go mountains. But I love the beach too. I love the beach and Coke, but Diet Coke, just for clarification. Fruity candy or chocolate candy? Chocolate. Fruity. Really? Like sour gummy worms? <gasps> Trolleys. Yes. Girl, yes. Same. So far, every one of these fun questions Zach has answered, I 100% disagree with. (laughs) Okay, for those people who listen to the Christmas podcast, we should do this one. (laughs) Now, also, what you should also know is that Zach is sitting there with a Tennessee sweatshirt on. Oh, I was going to say that. I am sitting here with an Alabama sweatshirt on. So part of the thing that I think is going to be very interesting (laughs) is, yeah, we are going to have ourselves some brawls in the hall. (laughs) I am 100% for sure of that. I thought if if we left Alabama and came to Indiana, I would uh, be done with fooling with Alabama fans. But apparently yeah. not. Apparently, <laughs> apparently your sanctification is not done. That's right. Okay. And evidently mine isn't either. Okay, cookies or cake? Cookies. Cookies. Not a big cake guy. Ice cream, where does that fall? Ice cream is cream. pretty high on the list Ooh, for us. We love ice cream. Ice cream. Above well, what's your favorite? What's your ice favorite cream. ice cream? Bluebell banana pudding ice cream. Okay. Yeah, we like bluebell. Yeah, something me. chocolate for me. <laughs> Where we live, we have a bluebell factory. And oh, yeah. you can go and get fresh bluebell ice cream on the site for a dollar. Carpenters for Christ <laughs> they came take up you there. here and complained every day. <laughs> That there was no bluebell ice cream. That's hilarious. And I ended up every day saying to them, Your men, grow up. <laughs> every day I'd say, Your men, just grow up. It's okay. There's there's other ice cream than bluebell. It is good though. Chick fil A or Popeyes? Chick fil A. Chick fil A, yeah. That's a good thing. Chick fil A or Bojangles? Ooh. Talking about breakfast or lunch? Did, did, you, did you everyone notice? <laughs> Now, we don't have any Bojangles here, but did everyone notice that right there, the decision was being made? Are you, why are you looking at me so much <laughs> for this conversation? Because <laughs> I'm from the South, and I know the difficulty of that conversation. Zach then asked, for breakfast or lunch? Breakfast? Bojangles. 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 That's the right the Cajun answer. Cajun chicken biscuit. Cajun you chicken biscuit. You're, baby, you're talking right. But you can right. get that any That's time That's the first the right answer he's made. <laughs> That's quite a debate around here because some people prefer Popeyes and I'm hardcore I'll, Chick-fil-A. Yeah. I'll do Bojangles every day of the week over any of that. Okay, coffee or tea? Coffee. 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 You you roast your own beans is what you were telling us earlier, right? I've went off the deep end. That is coffee. That schnapps. is dedication to the tea. Yeah, that's good. Are you a paper book or an e-book? Paper book. Me too. Paper books all the way. Okay. It's good. Sweet. Bobby, can you tell us a little bit about what the process looks like for Zach and Courtney coming to Northwoods? So the process for us is there's a meet and greet that you will have heard about. It will be online that we'll tell you about through our Facebook, also at church. At the timing that we're doing this podcast, I can't even tell you when it is. There is a meet and greet that you'll be able to come and meet the Newsoms on Sunday the 22nd, there will be a vote after the second service for all of the members for Northwoods. We encourage you to come and be a part of that that vote. During the services, both services on the 22nd, they'll be interviewing Zach during those services for a few moments during the, the services, and you'll learn a little more maybe about them that day and have an opportunity to meet Zach and Courtney and their family. Also, Lord willing, we'll have a a new job description for Rachel because Rachel is moving towards where she's going to be doing women's ministry and assimilation. And so this is allowing us to utilize her skill set in an exciting way as we work on doing a better job of assimilating people into areas of serving and areas of connecting in groups in a greater way. And so we're excited about all of the things that are able to happen because of Zach and Courtney coming. And 
If you have any questions for myself or any of our elders, we would encourage you to feel free to just ask. Let us know. Hopefully, this podcast has been helpful for you, and we've been excited to have you guys here today. We've enjoyed it. We look forward to seeing you guys again on the 22nd, and thank you guys for being a part of the podcast. We look forward to seeing you all next time at the Northwoods Podcast. That's right. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the Northwoods Church Matters Podcast. If you'd like to find out more about Northwoods Church, you can visit us at our website, www.northwoodschurch.org. Again, that's www.northwoodschurch.org. Dot org.